how to pack the G12 Echo Cargo Parachute in accordance with TM 10 16 72 81 23 NP. This video is used as a supplemental training aid and does not supersede or replace the technical manual. The G12 Echo has a minimum drop altitude of 550 feet above ground level. The G12 Echo has a weight range of 501 pounds to 2200 pounds. When using two G12 Echoes the weight range is from 2,270 pounds to 3,500 pounds. The G12 Echo cargo parachute is primarily used for the aerial delivery of supplies and equipment by the container delivery system but can also be used with the Type 5 airdrop platform. Rigor check 1, proper layout. Verify lines 1 and 64 are on the top inside and lines 32 and 33 are on the bottom inside. Remove the canopy bridle loop from the stationary post and slide it to one side of the canopy vent lines. Divide the vent lines into two equal groups. Using an 8 by 12 inch piece of type 3 cotton muslin cloth, serve the vent lines as demonstrated. Secure the cotton muslin at a point 1 inch from each outside edge with 1 quarter inch cotton webbing, 2 turn single. Trim the running ends to 2 inches. Girth hitch the center line around the center of the vent lines. S fold the center line and place inside the canopy then reconnect the canopy bridle loop to the stationary post. Attach the medium clevis to the tension device and apply tension. Position a large fan on the left side of the suspension lines and inflate the canopy. Have rigor 1 hold the canopy skirt up and rigor 2 pull the center line down to a 0.6 inches from the canopy skirt. Ensure all twists are removed and the center line is between lines 32 and 33. Turn the fan off and position a line separator between the two suspension line groups and place lines 32 and 33 in the appropriate slots. Throw the right group of gores over the left group of gores ensuring line 33 stays in the line separator. Turn the fan back on and begin folding the right group of gores until reaching line 64. Continuously scan the canopy for damage. Move the fan to the right side. Throw the left group of gores over the right group of gores ensuring line 32 stays in the line separator. Turn the fan back on and begin folding the left group of gores until reaching line 1. Continuously scan the canopy for damage. Turn off the fan. Remove the running end of the center line from the canopy skirt. Ensure there are no twists then place it in the right slot of the line separator and on top of the right suspension line group. Rigor check 2. Release the tension device and remove the canopy bridle loop from the stationary post. Rigor 2 and 3 raise the top center gore while Rigor 1 pulls the free end loop of the center line toward the medium clevis until the served portion of the canopy vent lines become aligned with the canopy lower lateral band. The running end of the center line should be located 6 to 9 inches below the medium clevis. Dress the top gore. Trace the center line from the vent lines down to the medium clevis removing all twist. Remove a riser from the clevis and install the center line by running the end loop onto the clevis. Reinstall the removed riser. Beginning at a point 3 feet above the canopy lower lateral band tie the canopy using one turn single, 8 fourths cotton thread. Secure the tie with a surgeon's knot locking knot and trim the running ends to 2 inches. Make subsequent ties at 5 foot intervals as demonstrated. Note: All suspension line ties will be made with one turn single, 8 fourths thread. 5 feet below the lower lateral band tie the left and right suspension line group ensuring the center line is included in the right suspension line group tie. Remove the line separator. 10 feet from the lower lateral band tie both suspension line groups and center line together. Continue tying at 10 foot intervals ensuring the last tie is 1 foot from the connector link assemblies. Using a nylon strap or a suitable packing aid route quarter inch cotton webbing down through one set of connector links and up through the adjacent stack. Ensure to capture the center line in the middle. S fold the slack in the center line between the two connector link stacks. Pull the quarter inch tight and secure with a surgeon's knot locking knot. Trim the running ends to 2 inches. Rigger check 3. Riggers 1 and 2 raise the open end of the deployment bag and hold the deployment bag erect. Ensure the suspension line stow panel is facing toward the 12 o'clock. Rigger 3s fold the canopy into the deployment bag as demonstrated. Rigger 3 will stow the remaining canopy and s fold 5 feet of suspension lines into the deployment bag open end. Rigger check 4. 
girth hitch to 18 inch lengths of quarter inch to each stow loop on the center of the stowage panel. Fold the side flaps then the locking stow flap. Insert the lock stow loops through the appropriate slots and temp tie the bag shut. Ensure the suspension lines are on the left hand side, riggers view, of the temporary tie. Make the first locking stow to riggers view right and the second locking stow to riggers view left. The locking stow should be 3 inches. Untie the temporary tie, and route both ends of the quarter inch through the center locking slot and secure the group of suspension lines as demonstrated. Trim the running ends to 2 inches. Remove both packing aids. Lay the bag down and flatten the bag. Girth hitch 24 lengths of quarter inch cotton webbing to the stowage panel. There will be 2 lengths of webbing on each loop. Extend the suspension lines toward the bridle end of the deployment bag. Using an 8.5 inch wide by 24 inch long piece of craft paper, wrap the suspension lines. Secure each end of the suspension line wrap with the 8 fourths cotton thread 1 turn single surgeon's knot and locking knot. Trim the running ends to 2 inches. Make the first regular stow to the upper right corner of the stowage panel. Rigger check 5. Continue stowing the suspension lines and risers in an alternating fashion. Ensure the connector links fall between the suspension line securing ties. Make the last suspension riser tie 16 inches above the suspension clevis to the center stow loop using the previously installed webbing. Trim all tie ends to 2 inches. Rigger check 6. Bring the deployment bag cover over the stowage panel. The loops on the cover should overlap the loops on the side of the bag. Using a 60 inch length of quarter inch cotton webbing, secure the end of one web length to the first loop on the upper right corner of the deployment bag cover with two half hitches. Lace the deployment bag cover to the side of the deployment bag, loop over loop, toward the opening of the D bag. Repeat the same steps for the opposite side. Be sure to route the webbing under the center carrying handle. Secure to the last loop with two half hitches. Trim the running ends to 2 inches. Fill out the log record. Rigger check 7. Packing complete.